Hi, hello. In this video, I will show you how you can create high quality time lapses even with a budget camera. These cameras usually don't have a time lapse mode built into them, but even if they do, they only produce full HD resolution without much control over the image. So if you want to learn how you can create 5K, 6K or even more resolution with the ultimate control over the image on pretty much most cameras, don't stop watching the video. We're gonna go to the top of this building right here and we're gonna take some time lapses over cars driving by, clouds moving by, so it's a pretty cool location, but I had to climb to the rooftop of this building, so uh, see you in a moment. we are at the rooftop and we're gonna take some time lapses over the road down here we have some cars driving by we have some people walking and this alley here we have some trees we have some clouds should be pretty interesting so let me set up the tripod and let me walk you through the camera settings and basically the entire technique and we're gonna compare it to the built-in time-lapse mode that I have on my Canon 7 d we're gonna see the differences I'm gonna talk about which method is better over the other and why, so let's set up. All right, so the camera is set up. As you can see, the tripod situation is a little bit sketchy because basically this one leg is resting on this pole and the two legs are resting on this ledge here. So hopefully uh, I won't tip over the tripod so it won't fall off the roof because that would be kind of unfortunate. However, now that I think of it, at least I would have it on YouTube, right? Anyway, so um, like I said, my Canon 770 has a built-in time-lapse mode. But the problem with those time-lapse modes is that the resolution is not that good compared to what the camera can actually do with regards to photography and time-lapse. Because what essentially a time-lapse is, is just a sequence of images that are taken with the fixed amount of time in between them. So for instance, five seconds, seven, 10, 30 seconds or whatever. So you take one frame each, let's say five seconds, and then you play it back as if it was a movie recording at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or whatever. And that way the time is basically squished in. So it's the scene and everything just moves super fast. And that's essentially what a time-lapse is. So instead of using a built-in time-lapse mode, what I can actually do is just take individual photographs every five seconds. And because I am taking photographs, I will be able to take raw images so I can manipulate them in Lightroom or whatever software I use to develop my images. So I have a lot of room for, you know, bringing down highlights, recording shadows and all that goodness that raw files uh, allow us to do. And on top of that, I actually have a full resolution of my sensor. In the case of my Canon 770D, that is 24 megapixels. So I have 6,000 pixels wide and 4,000 pixels high. So it gives me around 6K resolution because the full HD is only 2K compared to 6K. So it's, uh, it's a lot of difference. And even cheapen cameras, like for instance, the Canon T2i have a resolution of 18 megapixels, which basically lets you create a 5K time lapses out of a super cheap budget camera. So this method is definitely worth checking out. But there are a couple of things that you need to remember. For instance, make sure that you are set to manual exposure because you don't want to have changes in your exposure between frames. You want it to be consistent. And also you want to set manual focus because you don't want your camera to be auto focusing between frames. Maybe there's someone moving by, walking past, and the camera will try to auto focus on that subject instead of keeping the focus on the, for instance, background that you want to have in focus. So make sure you have manual focus and manual exposure for best results. So let's actually try to record two time lapses. Um, both will be five seconds playback long and both will be uh, produced by taking exposures every five seconds. Okay, so in case of my Canon 77D, what we need to do is make sure we are in movie mode and then we have to go to menu and on the fifth screen, we have a time-lapse movie. Let's go into that. We can enable it and then we can choose the interval. So I said I need a frame every five seconds. So five seconds here, number of shots, 150 because this is how many shots I need for 
30 frames per second playback for a 5 seconds of duration. And my camera actually tells me that it will take 12 minutes and 25 seconds to complete the time lapse. Let's accept it. And let's just uh, start. Okay, so the first time lapse is done. Let's actually do the second one using the manual technique. In order to do that, my camera actually has a built in intervalometer, so I can use it. But if your camera doesn't have a built in intervalometer, don't worry, because it probably has uh, an input where you can plug in an external intervalometer. And I have one actually that is super cheap and I can highly recommend it. Let me grab it. This one, this is a Pixel TC252. It's very cheap, it's very plasticky, it's made in China, but it does the job really, really well. So I can highly recommend it. I will link to it down in the description box below if you wanna pick one up yourself. But since my camera has a built-in intervalometer, let's just use that. So what we need to do is actually flip to photo mode and then we can go to menu. And then we have on fifth screen again, we have interval timer. Of course, it can look differently on your camera, so you have to refer to the manual to find it. Uh, let's enable it. We go to info for more details. Interval 5 seconds, number of shots unlimited. We will just stop it when it's done. And you can actually change your aspect ratio to 16 by 9 to have a preview of what will the output time lapse look on the standard movie aspect ratio. And let's just fire it up. So after 12 and a half minutes, we can switch off the camera, take out the SD card, dump it into the computer, edit the files and stitch them together, dump it into Premiere and create a time-lapse manually. And it will be much higher quality, much better resolution. And honestly, you might ask, okay, but why do I need a 6K time-lapse if I'm gonna put it into a full HD timeline of my travel video or something? And the answer is simple, because if you have more resolution in a single clip, you have actually a lot of room to play with if post-production. For instance, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can rotate, you can do all different kinds of animations without losing quality. Because if you try to zoom in significantly into a full HD image, you will lose a lot of detail. But if you have high resolution like 6K and you zoom in, you don't lose the resolution, you don't lose quality, and you can get super creative in post-production. So it's definitely, definitely worth checking out. All right, now that it's done, let's dump the footage into the computer and let me show you the difference between those two time lapses so we can see for yourself. Okay, so I went down from the rooftop and I have my computer right here. I already dumped the footage and right now, let's actually take both of these clips into Premiere and let's see the differences. But first, we need to convert the individual images we took in that sequence and convert them into a video clip. So let's do that. So I have all of those images in Lightroom. And what you can do now is actually develop those individual frames as standard photographs. So you can apply your favorite preset, you can bring down highlights, bring up shadows, do whatever you want, change the white balance, etc, etc. And we can actually try to use one of my presets. I think Amethyst looks kind of cool for this scene. By the way guys, if you would like to receive my whole Lightroom preset pack for absolutely free, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, then go find me on Instagram. Here's my handle. Go there, a uh, link to my profile will be also in the description of this video. Give me a follow and write me a private message that you would like to receive my Lightroom preset pack for free and I will send you a download link, simple as that. But for the sake of this comparison and this video, I'm actually not going to apply any preset because I want to compare the time-lapse made out of individual photographs with the time-lapse that my camera produced in its built-in time-lapse mode. So let's just export those images as they are right now. So let's undo that and then select all of the images. You can click Command or Control A, then right click, export and export. Here for best results, make sure that the put in subfolder checkbox is selected and you can name the subfolder whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it Timelapse Raw. Then what I usually do is check the rename to option and make sure that custom name dash sequence is selected. Then you can make a custom prefix here. I'm just gonna call it Timelapse Test. And what Lightroom will do, it will actually export those images as timelapse test dash one, timelapse test dash two, dash three, and etc. That way you will know in which order those frames should appear in the timelapse clip. And right now you can click export, but I'm not gonna do it now because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, so it's quite long. So I have already actually done it. So let's jump straight into Premiere Pro and let me show you how to import those images as an image sequence that will appear as a video clip in your Premiere timeline. 
So I have a fresh Premiere Pro project right here and I have already imported the video clip from the built-in time-lapse mode in my camera. So let's just drag it into the timeline. And this is basically how it looks. So let's now import the image sequence. Right click on the project panel and import. Then locate the folder where we have exported those JPEG files, mine is right here. Click on the first one and go to options and make sure that the image sequence is checked and then import. We can see that Premiere has imported our image sequence as a video clip that appeared right here and we can see that the resolution of this clip is 6000 pixels wide, which is pretty awesome. So let's drag this clip onto the timeline. And what I want to show you right now is the difference in color grading those clips and the difference in resolution when we try to zoom into those clips. So let's try color grading. So what I want to do with this image is make the sky a little bit deeper blue and a little bit darker. So let's go to Lumetri, open the curves panel right here, and let's scroll to hue versus hue. Let's take the eyedropper, drop it here, bring it down a little bit. Let's go to hue versus luma to darken it, again here, and darken it a little bit like for instance like this maybe. And now if I scrub through this clip, you can already see that in this part of the sky, something weird is going on. I will show you the final result in full screen in just a minute, so bear with me. In order for it to be a fair comparison, let's actually copy the entire Lumetri effect and paste it onto our image sequence clip. So if you want to copy the effect, open the effects control, select the Lumetri control and then command or control C, select the image sequence and command on control V. Here it appeared and it's the same exact adjustment. In order to show the difference in resolution, what I'm going to do is after a second, I'm going to zoom into the time lapse three times, play it for one second and then zoom out. So you can see the difference in resolution in the zoomed in portion of the time lapse. Okay, so let's now render this sequence and let me show you in full screen what the actual difference is between those two time lapses. So, looking at this comparison, you can clearly see that the time-lapse created by the image sequence from individual photographs is far more superior than the time-lapse created by my camera and its built-in time-lapse mode. The color grade doesn't fall apart, and I can zoom into my image three times without losing resolution on a full HD timeline. This is awesome. So that's basically how you do it, and that's basically why you should do it. So that's it for now. If you like this video, Make sure to hit the like button down below, it really makes a difference. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this and I also make travel videos, vlogs, photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials, so if you are interested in any of that, you know what to do. But that's it for now, have a good day, see you next time and bye bye.